afternoon, ladies and gents. It's Simon Brown here doing the introduction for Warren Peacock. As I said, Warren will be doing the presentation. You find him at the tradersplace.coza. You also find him on Twitter, Warren Peacock. Um, and he's looking particularly to share CFD trading system. It's called a trend fishing because all good systems have a name that we both agreed with beforehand. Um, we're probably going to run for about half an hour. If you've got questions, throw them in the Q&A box uh, and we'll manage those questions at the end of the presentation. With that, over to Warren. Thank you, Simon. Welcome, everybody. Uh, trend fishing is the name of the system because, quite simply, that's what we're doing. Uh, the premise of the whole system is that we are trading in the direction of the trend. So the trend must have, uh, sorry, the share must have a trend history. You must be able to look at the chart, you know, in hindsight, and say, you know, this thing has been trending for for at least a couple of months. Uh, we're trading in that direction which means that we can hold the trade for anything from one day to three months and some of them even last a bit longer than that. Uh, this is one way that we maximize returns while cutting our losses. And this is a trading system and must fit with your overall trading plan just to differentiate between the two. The system is what we actually use to make the trades and the trading plan is what we use to manage all of our systems. Uh, for this particular system, I've just used an, an account size of 100,000 Rand, uh, standard stop loss of 2%. I mean, you, know, you can use anything up to 3, maybe even 5% of the push. And in this example, it would be a 2,000 Rand stop loss per position. I've worked on a maximum of 5 positions, giving me a total account risk of 10%, should all 5 trades fail. And the idea is, out of 5 trades, one should work really well, one should fail really badly and the others should stop loss out at a, you know, at a normal level. Uh, this system is for longs and shorts. And for this example, I've used single positions. In other words, I'm not scaling in, I'm not scaling out. Two types of profit take I've put on the table here, 5 to 10% on the underlying share or a reversal pattern. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritties of it. Uh, my favorite moving averages, the 21 and the 89 EMA. I'm going to be using support and resistance as part of the system. I then apply a stochastic, 10 period stochastic with a three smoothing and a three moving average. I apply the RSI 10 period and I also use candle patterns to determine the triggers. Uh, the setup, very straightforward. If the 21 EMA is above the 89 EMA, the trend is up. The setup for that, in other words, when I'm looking to make a trade, is when the stochastic and or the RSI go oversold, I'd be looking to take a long. In other words, I don't need both of them to do it. It's great if they do, but it's not essential. On the uh, short setup, if the 21 is below the 89, the trend is down. The stochastic and or the RSI go overbought. I'm looking to go short in the direction of that underlying trend. The triggers that I apply, uh, you know, obviously there are literally hundreds of triggers that one can apply. I've sort of narrowed it down for this presentation to a couple of candle patterns. Uh, for the longs, we look at morning stars, bullish engulfing, or hammer patterns for early entries, or one that the oscillator that has gone oversold turns up from that position. On the short side, evening stars, bearish engulfing, or shooting stars, and you know, that would be for your early entry, or one of the oscillators turned down from the overbought level. Exit strategy. If your hard stop is triggered, in other words, at 2,000 Rand, if that is triggered before the share has gotten anywhere near profit, then I certainly would cut it. It doesn't have to go 2,000 Rand. Uh, you know, if it drops 1,500 and you can see that the, the trade has failed, you can also take it. Uh, but if it goes beyond 2,000 Rand, you definitely, uh, I would cut it. On the profit side, 5% plus is achieved on the underlying share. I'm certainly looking to exit. Oscillators become overbought, oversold. In other words, they have gone in the opposite direction of the trigger. Targets are reached, which we base on support or resistance. And on the other side, for the guys that want to hold something a bit longer, we can use trading stops. And we use that when it's triggered on the previous swing. Don't worry, I've got pictures. We will see the whole lot. 
Okay, I'll put some details into this slide. Uh, the trade setup and trigger. Uh, trade number one, we can see this is old mutual. Trade number one on the left hand side, uh, quite simply the stochastic was just above 20, just touching 20, the RSI had crossed below 20, and we got a buy signal from that, the little green arrow over there, and we had a hammer the day before, yes it's black, uh, the color of the hammer doesn't really matter. In normal candlestick trading we would not have necessarily made this trade because we're looking for support and resistance for candle patterns to trigger. But here I've got the two oscillators in oversold territory. I've got a long uptrend on old mutual. You're welcome to go and look at the chart afterwards. Uh, it's been in a long upward trend. I'm quite happy for that trade to take off. And the second trade here is one that is actually currently open. And that would be trade number two. We had a slight bullish engulfing candle pattern. And in this example, it was only the stochastic that went oversold. Now remember these two oscillators have different mathematical formula. They are going to trigger differently. It depends on the momentum of the chart. In this example, we had four down candles, very sharp drop off. The stochastic is going to lead the RSI. The candle pattern, slightly bullish engulfing. The next day had an opening gap. Came down through the day, closed the gap off, but we still would have looked to enter the trade based on the candle pattern and those oversold oscillators in the direction of that trend. Uh, this is yesterday morning's chart when I had a look at it. I do these things end of day and I've zoomed in nice and close here. Remember what I said, the first target is 5%. Uh, yesterday's decision was you know, a little bit critical. We had old mutual sitting in a very tight range at resistance. So we've got resistance from the previous swing high. Old mutual came up and has been in a very tight zone for, for a good couple of days. And yesterday I did consider cutting the position. I made a decision not to do that. I rather moved my stop up to this red line, which is support of that consolidation. Uh, the entry level is the blue dotted line over there. The stop loss based on the chart is the red dotted line at the bottom. Uh, please remember, you know, you, you've all got different account capital. So make sure that your stop loss is calculated accordingly and also the chart stop loss is taken into account when you make your calculation. I haven't included those calculations. They are on the uh, other webinar I did on position management. Uh, so basically we have a risk of one and 5% would give us a reward of two. Remember now this is not a typical risk reward ratio trade. It is a trade based on a trading system in the direction of the trend and the assumption is always that the trend will continue until something is really clear comes up that that trend is not going to continue. So yesterday I decided to hold the trade in the morning and then this morning when I had a look, that was the result. So I was quite happy that I hadn't cut the trade. So we're still sitting with that. I'll check it again obviously tomorrow morning once I download my data. Uh, it is an end of day trading system. And something to note is firstly that 5% target is not a resistance level based on anything other than 5%. So there's no historical resistance there, but it's just a number. Uh, the two oscillators, both the RSI and the stochastic are heavily overbought. And as anyone who's been trading trends would know, that can remain uh, so for a very long time. What I would be looking for now is either some sort of reversal you know, reason for the chart to reverse, maybe a bearish candle pattern, or I would certainly call it should the price break back below the orange line, which is previous resistance. Should that become support, I'd be quite happy. Should that line be broken, I'm quite happy to walk away with whatever profit I'm left with. The idea is, guys, that you, if once you've covered cost on the trade, you want to be reasonably flexible on the exit, but you do not want the price to fall back to your entry plus cost, and that's entry and exit cost. So Old Mutual is a, is a trade that is still open and there will be a decision made obviously at some point. Uh, right now it looks to be continuing in the direction of the trend and I'm not too sticky on the exit just yet. And at the end of the presentation there, there's a little bit of explanation as to why I've done this. On the short side I thought I'd throw in a long term chart. Um, a lot of people are nervous trading gold stocks and that's because most people want to buy them. 
uh, what we have here on Harmony is a very clear and definite downtrend. You can see all the little red arrows, that's where this particular trading system has triggered. And we can see, you know, visually, you can just see that those results would have been pretty decent. And it might be worth having a look at a trade based on this particular trading system. Okay, Harmony is a trade that is also open. Uh, what we have is price broke outside of the moving averages. You know, this is going back to the beginning of January. Breaks outside the moving average. A lot of traders would consider that a potential in, in trend change. And what happened to negate that idea was quite simply we had an opening gap. You know, it's called a runaway gap. Uh, the price has topped. You don't know that, of course, until hindsight. The price topped. We had an opening gap that confirmed the top, called a breakaway, shows strong downward momentum in the direction of the trend. Candle pattern-wise, there was nothing really. I mean, one could consider calling that Harami, but this being an end-of-day share, uh, there wouldn't really be a candle pattern on this one. But what we did have is we had the two indicators had been, the stochastic uh, especially, had been overbought for a very long period of time. Uh, you know, that's been a couple of days. The market then breaks away from the top. The oscillators break below the resistance levels. Price confirms the trade by creating the gap, and the trade is made. Now, with Harmony, because it had fallen from quite a distance above the moving averages, one would expect the momentum to continue. And I do like looking at the market in steps of three, uh, something called a measured move. And that's exactly what uh, Harmony did in this example. The initial stop loss would have been the top red line at 3.6% there, and that's 3.6% away from the entry price. That would have been the swing high. What we have now is Harmony came down, found support or created its own support. Uh, there's nothing historical there. Created its own support. It then came back into the zone, which is the area between the two moving averages, and this trading system triggered again. Now, some traders would have been out, you know, once it starts going sideways, and it's gone sideways for over a week, uh, we do consider taking a time stop on it. Uh, the decision is going to be yours at the end of the day. Harmony at that point, by the time the consolidation occurred, would have actually given a risk reward of one to three, and it would have been just under 11% return at the, at the absolute best price. Okay, we know we're going to struggle to get those. But even somewhere in that consolidation, if you had taken a, a profit, uh, you would have gotten somewhere between 8 and 10%, which is pretty decent considering that these shares can be very volatile. And most people that trade them or begin trading them are quite nervous. Uh, and it really took no time at all for you to hit that 10% mark. The second trade came in again. That's this little red arrow over there. Once again, we had oscillators overbought, trenders down. An opening gap occurs, in other words, a confirmation or called a breakaway gap again in the direction of the trend. Quite happy to make the trade. The little blue line is the entry price at 64.90 that little blue line over there, the stop loss would have been 5.5% away on the underlying share. That means for this particular trade, you would have taken less shares. A 5% stop loss on the underlying means higher exposure if you're wrong. You just simply reduce the number of shares to come back to that 2,000 Rand stop loss level. The first trade would have had more shares because it was only 3.5% stop loss, meaning that my 2,000 Rand would have been worth more shares in number. Now, the one to three target that we've got on this one again has not been triggered. The reversal over here, you know, we had once again a breakaway gap. From the low, there's no, no reason on the candles. The oscillators were oversold. And the decision again is going to be used the trader. Now, what I was looking at myself here is quite simply that previous support level was, you know, was below my entry price, and sorry, would have been not below my entry price. If the price had broken above that, I can stop out without a massive loss. In other words, it wouldn't have been a 2,000 Rand loss. It would have only been somewhere around 1,000 Rand. So the risk reward on that basis was actually better coming into the trade. The reason, and that would be the reason why 
I didn't take a profit down here. It's a breakaway gap, but the trend is down, therefore that trading gap is less reliable. The market then went up, Harmony went up and found good resistance just below the previous support level, and then it gave us two add signals. In other words, I'm already in the trade, but because this system is not designed for ads in this presentation, you would have just held that first trade and your swing high would be the ultimate stop and that support level which is now resistance would be your trading stop. So you can have a trading plan that is very rigid on entries but flexible on stop losses once you're in a profit. The whole idea here is that Harmony isn't a strong downtrend, has been trending downwards for a long time. The short is a higher probability than the long, and I was quite prepared because it's a reasonably small trade to just hold on to it. The critical question now, because this trade is also still live, you know, Harmony is still falling off, and I heard on the radio just now that, uh, you know, while I was in the car, I heard that resources are down again today, uh, over 2% which means hopefully that Harmony is following suit there, and uh, hopefully only because I'm short. Eh? The target is going to be that support level. So after that breakaway gap that occurred at the bottom, that level now becomes support. So it's around 57 there in the share. Should it break below that point, because that is the current swing low, I would then trail my stop to that level. And what you should be noticing is that the the price target exits are variable. And because the system works on probabilities, not so much on hit rate, but risk reward re returns. So the hit rate might be a little bit on the low side, in order you get stopped out more often than, than most people want, but the risk rewards are incredibly good if you are prepared to be patient and wait for the trade to tell you what to do. So we have Harmony falling off again, support level is close, the oscillators are oversold, I am starting to consider taking some profit. Uh, the little green line at the bottom is 16%, so currently you know, this trade is up around 10%, it's not a bad place to get out of it. Um, the other side of the coin of course is short trading has a higher risk than long trading, shares are expected to go up. So therefore shorts can be taken quicker, uh, Harmony is just in such a good downtrend, I didn't want to let it go, and then let it go past. Okay, here are some of the pointers. A trading plan allows you to make decisions based on your experience and observations in the market with an overall picture covering position, money management, and your trading systems. A trading system, on the other hand, allows you to make individual trades based on criteria that are relatively strict for a defined setup. So today was not a trading plan, it was a trading system. It has a defined criteria. I know exactly what I'm looking for in the setup and I know what my triggers are. The idea for the presentation is that money is made on entry. So the entry rules are pretty strict. Whilst the exit rules are flexible, once the price has moved through the danger zone and would produce a profit of the cost. Well, thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed that, and of course you're welcome to ask questions now. Uh, my contact details are there. I am offering a discount on the coaching side. It'll cost you 500 rand instead of uh, 2,000 rand. And this time I've put no expiry on it. It'll be valid as long as you watch the presentation. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, Warren. Uh, folks, if you've got questions, pop them into the Q&A box. A couple come through already. Uh, one from Chantel. She says, almost seems too simple, and then she puts in brackets, not a criticism. I think it's a brilliant point, Chantel, and Warren, I know you agree with me. We, we, we look to overcomplicate trading because we think that's how we're going to succeed at it, because our brain says in order to succeed, work hard, but, and that's how we start with it. Guys who successfully trade, typically their trading is really simple. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I've been doing this for about 10 years now, just over 10 years, and all the complicated systems I've had have been thrown out for these simpler systems. Um, if you look at any of my trading plans, most of them are simple. The most complicated that I get personally is candle patterns. 
Yeah, it's a fair point. Gang ball patterns, apart from engulfing, still baffle me. And then uh, Warren mentioned it there. I mean, it, it's about the risk management. And more than anything, get the risk management right. A couple of folks asking about that. If you head on to just one lap, uh, look under stop loss or under videos that Warren has done, you will certainly find a, a, a video on sort of 2% rules, position size. And I think it was Warren who made the point that if you get that right, everything else becomes a whole lot easier. Uh, Andre is asking if you can just scroll back to the system component slide again. Which one does it? Uh, uh, next it? one. Uh, that one, perhaps. Um, and then a couple more questions coming through. Uh, what values do you use in Stochastic and RSI? Uh, there's a R1033 on the Stochastic and the RSI 1030. 10.33 and 10 on those. Um, how many has been, question coming from Leon, uh, how many has been such a long downtrend? Should not be a reverse of the trend expected? Uh, guessing is not my game. Uh, at the moment, that trend is very strongly down. It has been down. Uh, I think it was about two years ago, we said Telcom's trend was mature. It is still falling as is Mittal. Uh, picking trend turning points is another skill for another day. Uh, I do feel as long as that trend is in play and there's no real sign of it turning around, I'm quite happy to be trading with it. Yeah, it's my point. I mean, you could go look at a bunch of charts. Uh, I go look at uh, the stocks like SAB. Go look at the Harmony chart. This thing has been going down uh, for years and years and years. And uh, as it gets more mature, it, it'll turn one day, perhaps, maybe. Wait for it to, to bite you in the nose with the turn. Question coming through, uh, you're looking at the equity here, but obviously you then go and trade the CFD. And that's absolutely. Yeah, this was based four CFDs on shares. Yeah, so you, you, you would always chart the share and then you would go and take the, the, the position at, at any one time, uh, but you would take the position in CFDs. A uh, question coming through again uh, from uh, Peter saying, you, you say maximum of five trades, so if you're in five positions and you get a sixth trade, you ignore it. Uh, that would be the idea if you've got a 100,000 rand account with, those, with the criteria that I had in the beginning. Um, just quite simply, I don't want the risk on my, my overall risk on the account to be more than 10%. So if you wanted to take more than five trades, uh, you know, the system can kick out anything up to 12 trades uh, at a time. In other words, you'll be in 12. If you wanted to trade that much, you just simply reduce your exposure per trade. Yeah, fair point. In other words, trade 1% rather than 2% and suddenly increase the number. Uh, another question coming through also from, from Peter, uh, and in essence saying, Oh, it disappeared there. Mm, hold on, I'll, Peter, I'll try to get your question back in a moment. I'm going to go to Andres now. Uh, will it be available for download? Uh, yes, it will on just one lap. Uh, give me until tomorrow because um, I've got a crazy whatever today is, Wednesday. Uh, Peter's question was, what is your universe of shares? Is it the top 40? Is it the market? Is it the top 100? Uh, look, I look at the top 50 consistently. Uh, for this particular system, it would be the top 50. Okay, so top 50 stocks, and, and typically I concur with that. Stay with the liquid guys, um, we can make great returns in, in, in those spaces. Uh, and then it is, uh, uh, Peter coming back again and saying, so basically you sit down in the morning, you've probably got a sense of which you're nearing, but you basically start at number one and quickly flip through the charts. Okay, I do cheat a little bit. I've got a piece of software that runs scans for me every morning. Um, I put those, you know, put the criteria into the scanning tool, run the scan every morning, it spits out answers, and then I make a decision from that based yeah, a little bit on experience and, my, yeah, and technical analysis. Uh, you wouldn't just take software and trade because it's... And the question which hasn't yet popped up, oh, there it comes, what software? <laughs> uh, I do use OmniTrader, end of day, and I just download the, you know, the daily data. Yeah. Uh, Robert is saying, um, when you, when you uh, try that again, when do you place the trade? Auction opening, auction closing during the course of the day? When, when, what, what is your timing of entry? Okay, personally, I just like to look at it at about 10 past 9, just let the, the opening rush get out the way. Um, but, you know, if you're quite happy to trade and take a chance in the auction, you're welcome to stick your order in there. Uh, sometimes you can get a much better price than, than you expected. Uh, I just like to sort of take it easy and wait for the market to calm down a bit. Uh, the one thing I do, though, is if I'm not in by 11 o'clock, then I tend to let the trade go. Okay, so you're certainly getting in early in the morning, if not the auction in the first hour or two. Uh, Manish is asking, uh, on your website, you've got Velocity Trade. Difference between Velocity Trade and Omni Trader scans? 
Uh, Velocity Trading is an actual trading platform where your CFDs are financed. OmniTrader is purely a technical analysis tool, a separate piece of software. You don't trade through it in South Africa. Hit the last slide. I hit the last slide. Back to uh, folks, questions drying up, so I've got one more here, and then we'll call it a day. If you've got some more, quickly slip them back in. Um, and uh, the, the question is, uh, if you haven't got 100,000, could you trade with 50,000 and do 1% instead of 2%? Uh, I think it's going to be specific to the trade that you are taking. So if that stop loss is too big, uh, in other words, you're going to end up with too few shares to make it worth your while. You're going to have to make a, a call. But yeah, sure, if you manage your risk properly, then the account size, anything over 30,000 is okay. Uh, anything between 50 and 100 sh is suitable. Yeah, and anything above 100, best of all. Uh, Andre, coming back again, you watch for entry, you watch the live price for entry and not place it at a specific level. So you don't say I'm buying old mutual at, at 22.40 and perhaps miss it because it's trading at 22.41. You'll cross that spread and take that price. Uh, yeah, it depends on what the spread is. Uh, Yes, yeah, sometimes you can get quite a large spread there, and I'm really not interested. I'll just wait for it to narrow it down a little bit. But yeah, you know, if you if you just if you get a signal, make the trade. Uh, to now try and wait and squeeze out an extra ten cents on old mutual, for instance, could take you three days. Uh, I like to rather be in the trade and then manage it from there. Yeah, my trading career is littered with trying to make 10 cents and then not getting in the trade and then making nothing and then watching it run away from me. Uh, Eric's asking about an idea about historic performance overall. Have you got enough uh, a track record of it? Uh, yeah, it's, overall the risk reward is between 6 and 8. In other words, for every, uh, for every one rand lost, you can make between 6 and 8. And the hit rate is between 40 and 50, uh, depending on what the overall market is doing. Obviously, while the market was trending up, it was phenomenal. Uh, once the market starts going sideways, uh, you get a couple of dodgy trades. Good, great question from Warwick. Um, do you allow for CFD trading costs from calculating risk percentages? I mean, you've got your 2%, that 2,000 Rand. Do the costs fit inside that or on top of that? Uh, I've tried to fit it in there. I'm not too fussy. Uh, you know, on those trades, the, the average cost is around 200 Rand if you take a 50,000 Rand position in each. Um, so it's 10% of the overall stop loss. Sometimes I do take it into account, uh, but I don't think it's that critical. Uh, last question coming from Robert. Uh, average length per trade, you said it can be a couple of days, a couple of months in your experience. I suppose it depends on the market. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you look at the, you know, the historical or mutual trade, the, if you go back into that presentation look at trade one, uh, that actually lasted for, I think it was two months. Um, the current trade has only been a couple of weeks. Uh, some of the positions, yeah, that's very difficult to say. I'd have to actually go and have a look at all of them. But when something is trending strongly, I want to be in that trend. So Old Mutual is one of those examples. It has been trending incredibly well uh, for the last year or so. You want to be in those trades. Mr. Price is another one that did really well up, up until its turning point. Uh, same with any of the retailers. Yeah, it's a fair point. And it comes to the point, Warren and I were discussing this before we went live with the webinar. I mean, I, I'm moving my intraday trading to end of day on the Aussie. Uh, I've finally been stopped out of a trade I went into on 28th November. Um, what do we do when we start trading? We want to default to that. Let's get a one minute chart and, and, and wear our finger to the bone. Um, in truth, I think we need to step back and, and, and less is more, longer is more. We want to be lazy. We don't want to be tied to the screen. Uh, Duncan's asking for some details on your coaching that you offer. Uh, okay. What I do on the coaching side is every client has different requirements. So the first thing would be to have a chat and see whether I can help you. And the other thing is, you know, what is it that you actually need? Uh, the coaching then revolves around what it is that the client wants and needs. Uh, sometimes you want something that you don't need. I try and help guide you through that. Uh, the first month is normally enough to sort of get an idea of what you should be looking for. Uh, if you need technical analysis, I help you with technical analysis. If you need trade management, I help you with that. So it's pretty broad. Uh, and designed for each person individually. Yeah, fair point. I mean, coaching as a concept is what does the individual need rather than the other way. This is what we give you. Uh, Robert's back again. Would you take two shares from the same sector? For example, would you take in Woolies and ShopRite if they both gave uh, signals? If they trigger at different times. If, okay, if they trigger at different times. Important point. So if they both gave you a trade today, you would pick one of them for tomorrow? 
Yeah, I mean, a good example, if I remember correctly, was uh, Mr. Price and Woolies gave a trade uh, at the same time, and I chose Mr. Price over Woolies just because I thought Mr. Price was going to give me a better overall return. Cool. Folks, we'll leave it there. We're bumping up on the 30-minute mark. Uh, my thanks to all of you for attending. My thanks to, to Warren. We actually had some uh, quite serious technical problems an hour and a half ago. His internet died, so he had to jump in his car and rush over to my offices. But uh, all went smoothly enough. He arrived with at least eight minutes before the presentation. Uh, ladies and gents, thanks for your attendance. Warren, as always, we really appreciate it. Great presentation. Thank you, Simon. Cheers, guys.